Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, today I'm going to show you how to um, create a texture for uh, the particle engine in uh, Vision Lab. So first, you uh, obviously have to import your image into GIMP. Go to Colors. Oops, oh, sorry. Layer. Transparency. Oops, I already added an alpha channel to this one. I forgot, but that's what you would click. Then you um, do do do. Sorry, kind of. mess myself up there for a second. Dang it. But, um, get in real close, zoom in or whatever, however much you want, and choose your uh, free select tool. And then just start selecting the image that you, uh, want to add alpha channel to. You want to cut it out. So go ahead and do that. So once you uh, finish your selection, you'll see these uh, little marching ant things, as they're called. Then um, click on Select, Invert, and this part's up to you. You can uh, feather it if you want, so you don't have to. And hit OK. You zoom out a bit. Then... Uh, I'm not sure if I inverted it already, but I may have. And cut. Oops, did the wrong thing, sorry. So, invert it, then cut, then select none, and your uh, move tool. Move the image to the center, and go back to layer, and go to layer to image size. And go back to image, canvas size. And obviously you want to change your width and height and click on the little link, chain link here. And click on resize. And do the Move it back towards the center as best you can. And do the same thing. Go to layer to image size. Then go to color. Desaturate. I'll get uh, these three options. And you can pick whichever one you like. It's up to you. I'll just do that one for now, average. And here's where you would start saving it. And you go to file, save as. Then you would name it. I pre-made a folder earlier. That's where you would save it to or whatever. And I didn't give it a name. I gave it a number to make it easier. And you can choose any of the uh, formats that Vision Lab works with. I just used a PNG. I'm not going to save it because I already have it. Then, um, so pretend we just saved it. So then we're starting over. And select your rotate tool and it'll be at the in the center of the canvas you just rotate it slightly then you would uh, go to file again and save this one like say the first image that I saved would be one this one would be two I'm not going to do that but um, each time it, it's, it'll be better for you if you uh, click on this layer to image size that way that extra stuff goes away and making sure your rotate tool is still selected just rotate the image again rotate it save it and keep doing that and here's the uh, folder where I saved all the images to and if you look at it uh, kinda did a 180 almost I didn't save this image twice or the number one image because when you bring them into Vision Lab it's going to cycle through all these images and when it gets to this last one it's just going to jump back to this one so that's all great right there then I made a copy of the folder and uh, just renamed all the <clears throat> all the images so this one's rotating uh, counterclockwise 
then over in Vision Lab, you, this is where you would uh, import your background, and you would add your effects. You would uh, drag your particle effect over here to uh, the timeline. I already have it set up. Then to uh, import the textures, just click on this folder, and uh, you'd obviously have to go find it wherever you saved it or whatever. I have it like on this other uh, hard drive. Then you would just click and drag, select them all, then import. I'm not going to because I already got it. Then um, here's uh, my settings for um, the actual particle texture. Like uh, have the animate. Uh, normally it's uh, set to single, but I obviously chose an animated random start. Have a rectangle for the emitter sitting right here, and um, the only thing I really did was uh, for the particle rate. I have one particle being emitted per uh, per frame, and I extended the lifetime to the 300 or the maximum just so it stays uh, visible the whole time. And um, everything else is pretty much like normal. Or whatever angle range is set to 180, scale is normal. Then um, the opacity and the color right here. I just have two gradients, and uh, normally, um, like this white means that the particle is going to be uh, opaque or visible, like throughout the whole animation. So that's fine. Then. Didn't really do a whole lot else, but uh, like the speed starts a little bit fast and goes down low. And s same thing with the uh, size. Starts off a little bit big, but then it just levels out. Then the gravity set kind of low and it's pointing straight down. So everything kind of just uh, floats downwards. But then from the, I added a wave circular thing from the grade tool set. And um, here's the settings. I kept them kind of low, so it's very uh, subtle. It gives the illusion that the leaves are floating from side to side a little bit. And have the RGB set right here. Alright, so here's the animation. <clears throat> Hopefully it looks okay to you guys um, through the screen capture. I'm not sh really sure how it's going to look. But um, you can see how the rotating is like really, really smooth. I didn't do like any grading to it to match it with the background. So that's something you'd actually want to do so they don't seem like they're pasted on. But like I said, as you can see, the animation is like pretty smooth. That's why... Uh, when I was in Kemp, I saved a bunch of images or whatever and rotated them. And um, that's something like uh, like I see uh, a lot of the guys that use this software, like Vision Lab or whatever, or any of the lab product, products from uh, FX Home. Whenever they use particles, like the animation is like crappy or beyond. It's just, I don't know. It's awful. But um, if you uh, take the time to do a little bit more work. I mean, like this was this is something really really simple. Like especially when you look at the like fire effects or anything like that from some of the tests that a couple of the guys have done. But uh, like I said, even um, <clears throat> the textures that are come pre-packed with uh, the lab products. I mean, even if you were to take one of those textures and just manipulate it so it's not I don't know, so staticky, like it's just like has no life to it, or whatever. So, uh, but yeah, you know, just think about it. You know, you want your renders to look good instead of like just cartoony. And, like this isn't uh, like perfect, but you know, if it's, this came out smooth with a few minutes worth of work, you know, anyone can do it. But um. If this doesn't look all that smooth to you, I'll actually I'll put a the clip that I actually used, or I use this clip, but it might look smoother in the original format. <clears throat> but all right, thanks for watching.
Hope it helps you. All right. See ya.